Hello and welcome to the Spatial Structures Movers and Shakers interview series as we look ahead to the ISS Annual Symposium and Spatial Structures Conference taking place at the University of Surrey in August 2021. My name is Mark Richardson and today I'm joined by Mike Xi, who is a distinguished professor at RMIT University. Mike is also the founding director of the Centre for Innovative Structures and Materials at the same institution and was recently awarded the Victoria Prize for Science and Innovation by the State Government of Victoria, Australia. Mike, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Mark, thanks. Nice to join you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on our Movers and Shakers interview series, Mike. Thanks once again. Um, we start by asking our guests about the period of lockdown. How has lockdown been for you in Australia? Uh, we are fortunate to have far fewer COVID cases in Australia than Europe and the USA. Still, we have to work from home since March this year. The lockdown has had a significant impact on some of the projects in my team especially those involving experiments. Another significant impact is related to recruitment of staff and students. And for example, I've been trying to recruit several talented postdoctoral researchers from overseas since the beginning of this year, but they won't be able to come to Melbourne until perhaps the middle of next year due to international travel restrictions. On the positive side, the convenience of online communications has provided unprecedented opportunities. Although I've been working from home for the past eight months, I was able to present my research to far more people than ever before. For example, I was delivering a webinar in May this year. The one hour online presentation and discussion attracted an incredibly large audience of over 17,000 researchers, practitioners, and students worldwide. If we didn't have the lockdown, I would have to perhaps repeat the seminar 100 times face to face and travel for a whole year nonstop in order to reach so many people. Well, that's a very good point, Mike. Uh, good again to see uh, some of the advantages um, where they exist that have come out of the situation we find ourselves in. And uh, also good to hear you effectively had a, a an arena, almost like a rock concert of people attending your lecture. So that's, that's really good. Um, we also ask our guests about their career journey and their career paths. Maybe you could tell us and provide an overview of your own career journey to date. I was born and raised in China, and I did my PhD at Swansea University in the United Kingdom. And I studied computational mechanics under the supervision of Professor Oleg Zinkowicz, who was a, one of the pioneers of the finite element method. After I completed my PhD degree, I came to Australia in 1991. However, I had great difficulties in finding a job and after being unemployed for five months, I was most fortunate to be offered a short-term research assistant position by Professor Grant Stephen of the University of Sydney in 1992. This, this was where we conducted our initial research on the evolutionary structure optimization method. The first paper we wrote together has attracted over 2000 citations so far. More recently, one of my career highlights has been receiving the Laureate Fellowship from the Australian Research Council to support my work in the field of digital design and advanced manufacturing of freeform architecture. The fellowship provides generous funding for five years to enable me to focus on establishing a world-class research team at IMIT University to develop new technologies for delivering sustainable and innovative buildings, bridges, and other infrastructure. Excellent, thank you very much, Mike. And would you be able to tell us more about your experience founding the Center for Innovative Structures and Materials at RMIT? How was the idea born and um, what was the mission of this research center? Certainly. 
I joined IMIT University in 2002, and together with my collaborator, Peter Felicitti, I founded the Innovative Structures Group in 2003. Over the following nine years, the group achieved significant out research outcomes, particularly in the area of topology optimization of structures and metamaterials. My team collaborated with many architects, including my former colleague at IMRT, Professor Mark Barry. Mark was the executive architect for the Sagrada Familia Basilica in Barcelona. He encouraged me to apply our topology optimization technique to various structure components of the Sagrada Familia. It was fascinating that we were able to obtain a series of organic forms, which were strikingly similar to those originally designed by the legendary Spanish architect, Antoni Gaudi. In 2012, I established the Center for Innovative Structures and Materials at IMIT. The mission of the research center is to develop advanced techniques for creating innovative and efficient structures and materials, and to apply these techniques to solving real world problems. That's great, thank you, Mike. And as you alluded to there, you have notable expertise in structural optimization, and have also been involved in cross-disciplinary research. Um, could you tell us about how you got into this area and what are the challenges and opportunities of applying topology optimization to different fields? Um, the objective of our research is to use the least amount of material to achieve the best structural performance. Achieving more with less is at the heart of all the techniques we are developing. These techniques are of fundamental importance to a wide range of disciplines, including aerospace engineering, regenerative medicine, and architecture design. I started my research at the aeronautical engineering department at the University of Sydney. At that time, we were hoping to develop a simple structure optimization technique to help reduce the weight of aircraft. As we know, weight reduction is of critical importance for saving fuel consumption of aircraft. We have collaborated with the Boeing company to apply some of our techniques. But the most amazing thing to me is that our technique has been used by many architects to design large scale buildings and bridges. There are significant challenges and opportunities of working with people from different fields. And let me give you one example. When I discuss my research on structural optimization with mathematicians and engineers, they often ask me whether my method could find a single solution, the very best solution. They call this the global optimal, which is important from the theoretical point of view. However, when I work with architects on real projects, they would often ask me whether I could provide multiple designs which have similar structural performance. Instead of searching for a single solution which would be 100% structure efficient, why can't I sacrifice say 5% of the structure performance so that I could provide 10 solutions which look substantially different? So this perspective and requirements for my collaborators in architecture has led my team to work on some of our recent research on new algorithms to produce diverse and competitive designs. Our new technique enables us to create multiple designs which are structurally efficient and geometrically different. Excellent, Mike. That was very interesting. Thank you very much for taking us through that and very interesting to hear the different perspectives uh, that you alluded to. I will now hand over to Mike for our middle section entitled Your Space, Your Structure. Mike will be taking us through a presentation on a topic relating to spatial structures of his choosing. So over to you, Mike. So I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the evolutionary structure optimization method and its applications to architecture design. The 
evolutionary structure optimization method was developed by my team in the early 1990s. The idea is, is actually very simple. If you want to design a better structure, you can actually start from any, any initial shape and gradually remove the inefficient material from the structure. And the, the remaining material would form the optimum design. And the method is very easy to understand and easy to implement. It can be linked to um, most of the existing structure analysis software packages and the tools architects use like Rhino. I, I give you a very simple example of the ESO method. Say we have a structure like this under gravity, I fix one point on the top. And what I want to know what would be the best shape to, to um, suit this given loading and boundary condition. So we can divide this initial design domain into small bits and, and pieces. These are called the finite elements. And using this um, technique, we can find the stress distribution very, very easily. So we would notice that the stress at the four corners of this initial structure is zero. So that indicates that these uh, corners, the materials at, in these regions are not effectively used. So we can remove these inefficient material step by step. And we would see this uh, evolutionary process. So every time we are removing the elements with the lowest stress and gradually we will get a new design. If we compare the initial design and the final design, we will notice that the original design has different colors throughout the whole structure. And the final design we are getting is a, is a design with uniform surface stress. So depending on the rules we use, we would get different designs because we have many different um, design constraints or objectives to look at, and we, we could use different rules to achieve these different objectives. And later on, we have uh, uh, improved our technique. So not only can we remove the inefficient material from the structure, we can strengthen the most critical part in a structure by adding material to these locations. So the bi-directional ESO piece would be far more robust and efficient. And a simple example of BISO is given here. Say, if we want to design a bridge type of structure, I give the boundary condition here, it's simply, su simply supported at the four corner bottom. I have uniformly distributed load and leave a gap in the middle because that's a bridge. And the initial design can be very simple, a slab with four columns. And all the rest can be determined by our BISO algorithm. So the algorithm would add and delete material according to the structural requirement. So if we look at this uh, process, we are not making local um, small changes to the initial design. The process has fundamentally change the structure concept of, um, of the design. So we are getting an arch bridge with additional members so that the whole structure would have quite uniform stress distribution to make it efficient. And apart from being uh, structure efficient, we also noticed that the outcome of our mechanical rules is very beautiful as well. It, very, it looks very organic and resembles a lot of things we see in nature, like the trees, seashells, and others. So I think that's, that is, that's a reason behind the, the appeal of this simple technique to the architects. So not only can we use it to reduce the weight, we can create very elegant structure designs. So some of the um, um, structures designed by using the extended ESO method are given um, here. I just select a few. This one is by Professor Omori from Japan for an office building. And this was done around 2004, I think. And another example is um, designed by um, famous um, 
Japanese architect Asazaki with uh, Sasaki and uh, colleagues um, in Katao. This is a Katao Convention Center, and the form was found using the extended ESO method. These are some of the photos of the uh, structure, and I think it was completed around 2012. And I, sh I show you how this can be achieved using the BISO method we have developed. So if we fix the two bottom um, paths and put uniformly distributed load, um, by gradually removing the inefficient material and the adding material to the critical locations, we would see this process. And uh, after like about half an hour on the computer, you would see an uh, outcome like this. And there are uh, many other examples. This one is also by, uh, by Asazaki, um, a, a structure in Shanghai. These forms were found using extended ESO method as well. Um, my team has worked with uh, various architects um, to apply our uh, BISO method for uh, uh, different structures. This is a, a footbridge in Suzhou, China. This, the initial design is an enclosed tube. And by removing the redundant material on the tube, not only can we get a, a very efficient structure, and it also provides a very clever and innovative uh, design as well. And this is a, a footbridge we, we designed uh, in Melbourne um, in collaboration with an architecture firm uh, locally. Um, this is a, a one to four scale prototype of a section of the bridge I just showed you. So six identical pieces we can cast in the lab and connect them um, through bolts and nuts. Um, this is a, a recent uh, bridge we designed uh, for uh, China as well. Um, again, starting from a tube and by removing those inefficient materials and redistribute them into the critical locations, we can come up with such a beautiful and efficient structure design. This is another view of the same bridge. And there's many other applications of the uh, topology optimization method we have developed. So these are some examples um, done by my students and uh, team members. Um, these are some of the chairs. And the, the one here, it's actually, it's not a, a, a computer, it's a, it's a photo of a real um, chair, 3D printed. Um, these are two tables my student made for me. So if you have a chance to come to Melbourne, please do come to visit me. So these are the, the chair uh, tables designed using our technique and laser cut and assembled. And we have many other students who, who played with our technique. There's two undergraduate students, two girls, and learned how to use our software within a day or two, um, they, were, they, they were able to design the high heels for themselves and 3D print it um, like this. This is another um, student project. So using our BISO technique and um, by redistributing the material, he was able to design a wooden pavilion like this. And um, another student applied the technique to design an uh, unmanned aircraft. So we, have, we can just put the material anywhere in the design region. And by applying the, the forces on the four propellers, considering different loading conditions, we can come up with the design. And the whole airframe is 3D printed in one piece. And uh, we did some test flight. It flew very well. and it's very light and strong. And um, we have implemented our BISO technique in a, a very popular software package called Amoeba. Um, because we work with many architects, so we have uh, developed on the platform of Rhino Grasshopper and all the computation is done on the cloud. So these are some of the examples we can, we can do using our simple Amoeba software. You can search on the net for Amoeba 
um, you would find us, um, find all the um, information and the free downloads. And next, I'm going to show you a very short uh, video about um, what Amoeba can do and the, um, the examples. So these are some of the uh, examples from, from the Amoeba. And uh, I will start the video next. Mike, thank you very much for taking us through your presentation there. I really enjoyed uh, seeing it and learning more about the Bezo method, which you explained for us, some fantastic applications of that technology. Uh, thank you very much for showing it to us. We're now going to move on to the final section of our presentation, which looks ahead to the future of spatial structures and in particular to the 2021 conference. Now, a key theme of the 2021 conference is inspiring the next generation. What advice would you offer to aspiring engineers looking to enter the field of spatial structures? I think attending this conference would be definitely an inspiring experience for young engineers looking to ent enter the field of spatial structures. They would learn latest research and development in the field and see how new technologies are applied to a wide range of real projects. The conference is also a great opportunity for networking and establishing friendship and collaboration. That's great, Mike. Thank you very much. And um, out of interest, what innovations and developments in the areas of topology, structural optimization, and novel manufacturing methods do you anticipate being discussed at the forthcoming 2021 conference? I think new technologies in advanced manufacturing have made it possible to realize complex shapes generated by topology optimization techniques. At the forthcoming conference, I, I anticipate to see significant innovations in the integration of digital design tools and advanced manufacturing technologies. And I would also expect to see exciting developments 
of novel manufacturing methods which are aimed at minimizing material waste and environmental impact. Excellent, Mike. Uh, well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us today on the Movers and Shakers interview series. It was a real pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to you today. To our viewers, don't forget to follow the 2021 conference on social media. Links to our accounts across social channels are included in the description section of this video. But for now, Mike, thank you very much again for talking to us today. And hopefully we can catch up with you again on the Movers and Shakers interview series as we move closer to the 2021 conference. But for now, all the best and speak to you soon. Thank you for having me. Bye.